Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah from The Automator. And we had a question someone wrote and asked about using debugging VS Code. And the thing that, like I said, I, I think it's an amazing tool. I just don't use it daily. So I asked Isaiah to show us a couple things about how to use the, how to start the debugger, how to launch a program, and how to launch a program, you know, inside VS Code with both version one and version two. So yeah. and then some other ways to peek inside objects if you're not using the debugger. Okay, awesome. So basically, uh, it is really about the extensions that you use. As with those type of editors, they come with very good tools, but for other languages. So then you have to find something for auto hotkey. Now, there are some good extensions around, and I think um, I could show you. There's two of them. Uh, these are hotkey plus plus by um, Mark Wimmer uh, or, you know, Sweden. <laughs> uh, well, the thing is that he forked it from that guy because the guy stopped maintaining it. Mm -hmm. So this is the one that is supposedly a little bit more active. I haven't, I, I don't talk that much to that guy, but this other guy, the auto hotkey version two one, the THQBY. He's a Chinese guy, by the way. So if you're trying to talk to him, you see, you will. Is this the one that when we were talking to Dylan, Dylan yeah, it, well, converted it using Google Translate or something? In the yes, English, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think it was Dimitri, though. So, um, okay, yeah, sorry. So, so yeah. That, that he kind of you're like right. talked yeah. to him sorry. or so. It makes a lot more sense because he's using YouTube <laughs> all the time. Right. Right. So now, now, now the thing is that. Um, this one is extremely active. Like I, I messaged something to him and a few minutes later, he's actually talking back. So that's the reason why I use those two because usually they are the ones that are you know, more active. Yeah. So after you install those two, they usually come with a debugger already, but there are additional debuggers that you can install and stuff like that. But these two, if you install them, you're good to go. Now, after you have those two extensions, what is going to happen is that here at the bottom, when you click on the language selection, you should have auto hotkey and auto hotkey version two. Now you can change uh, some things like, for example, and this is something that I would talk about really quickly. Uh, you click on auto hotkey version two here, and then you click again and configure file association or some language settings for it. Now the language, the association, you can tell it like if, every time you open an AHK file, I want to open it with auto hotkey version two or auto hotkey. That's how you change the language association. And that's what I do for AH2 files or whatever. Now, after you have the language set up, let's go ahead and test this. Um, remember that you can, on VS Code, just go ahead and place code or um, breakpoints that once you start debugging, you will be able to watch objects and do other uh, very interesting stuff with it, watch all your variables and other things, which is why I'm using VS Code by itself right now, because it has very good debugger capabilities. Now, how do you run the script? The script must be saved. And how do I run it in debug mode specifically? That's the question. If you're using the auto hotkey version one language, right? It creates a little button up here that you see that it says debug AHK script and it has a function key attached to it, uh, a hotkey attached to it. Now, let me go ahead and show you something. Let's go ahead and open up the extensions again. Once you open an extension, once you install it, the first thing I always do is click on feature contributions. This tells you what the script can do or what that particular language can do. And specifically, I would look for the commands. Now the commands are stuff that the language allows you to do. And this line right here, F9 tells me that HK debug runs the script in debug mode. Notice that you can open the help file by clicking control F1. You can run the script normally. That means without the debug mode with control F9. 
and run selection. Now you can change all those hotkeys all the time by just grabbing the ID of that and just using the hotkey for um, VS code or just opening. I, I don't even know where to find that. Like the, the hotkeys palette, I don't even know. I, I either use the F1 command to just open keyboard shortcuts, which is quicker, but I always know, like I know my hotkey and I just press that, which is K followed by control K by followed by control S. Just click on that. It gives you the key bindings. And now you paste what you just said like this. And now you can change that to whatever combination you want. And I would do the same with the other language support. I just go to feature contributions. Now I know that for version two, if you want to debug the script, it would be F5. And I will show you something you have to understand. That you, I, I usually find the commands first because of the following. In AutoHotKey version one, the language support that I have, it creates a button up here that you can click and it runs in debug mode. And notice that I placed a breaking point and it just entered. But what happens is that uh, the AutoHotKey two language does not have the run button up here. He hasn't implemented that. So you have to actually press the hotkey for it. So you have to go, if you don't know what the hotkey is, you would go to feature contributions, see debug, and it says always oh, F5 or switch it to whatever you want. But you have to do this because the version two language does not have the run button up here. I will talk to the guy to see if we can implement that later on. But basically, that's something that you have to keep in mind. You do have a button for it. Yeah, I was. That's what I was doing the other day. I happened to be. Someone asked me to to show demonstrate something you had written. So I said, "Well, it's in version two. Let me just open a VS Code and launch it." And then I'm like, "Hey, how do I launch it?" No, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> exactly. So. Now, now, if you don't know, if you if you do not have a button like how we had in this case, you can still go here on the left to the run and debug command which is where you would actually debug. So, and, and, and especially when you open the script in debug mode, uh, it usually brings you here and you can just simply click on run and debug and it tells you how do you want to run it. And there are a few things that you have to keep in mind when you do this type of thing, because you have to configure it. If you press the hotkey, the F5 hotkey, it automatically does that for you. And notice that I got an error, right? It automatically configures the environment for you and does everything. That's why I use the hotkey. But if you, if you know what you're doing, you can just go ahead and read a little bit how it works. You can create a file. You can run and debug in a specific environment. You can create an environment for it. But just hitting the hotkey is going to get you that. Don't worry. Now, in this case, let's show something. Auto hotkey version one, let's go ahead and run this. I set F9 for this. It broke here because I put a breakpoint. Notice that I'm in the run and debug session. And notice that now I have kind of like all my variables. And if there is an object like this variable right here, after I step over it, now my object is defined here and I could access the data. That's the biggest point about using VS code, especially because I have the call stack and watching variables. What does that mean? The call stack is that it gives me a list of how I got to that point. If one function calls another function and that function called another function, in here, I would have kind of like a trace of all those functions and I know how I got there. And, and just to chime in though, um, Site for Auto Hotkey has this functionality as exactly. well as Auto Hotkey Studio. Do you know if Notepad++ does? Yes. Oh, it doesn't have debug at all, does it? It does. Well, you have to install kind of like an extension for it, but okay. yes. And right. the extension, the, the GUI is really bad. <laughs> like, okay. uh, is, is, is not really intuitive. I don't like it. All right. But in general, this is the reason why I go and, and, and use this thing. But what happens if you do not have VS Code or you do not have debugging capabilities? What would you do? Uh, well, or, or you just didn't want to have always launch it in debug mode, but you wanted to peek inside of an object. Right. In that case, you can use the M function created by Maestrith, uh, which we could share. Uh, I'll put the link beneath right. the share somewhere. Those two, the M share actually needs the object to string function as well. So what, what happens is the object to string is the one that actually creates the string. 
and the M function kind of like has a message box or something to show it. That's so what you do is you run the script and if you continue going, you will get a message box and it will list every single one of the key value pairs and stuff like, you know, it is a little bit uh, good if you do not have debugging capabilities set up, right? Well, and, and just to clear, uh, to be clear, just to help, uh, if you go on line four and define a new variable, you know, on line four, just var mm -hmm. equals Fred, whatever you want. Uh, yeah, in, yeah, in quotes. Now, yeah. after the OBJ put a comma and put var, it will it will iterate over if you use commas to limit the stuff. It will right. It will allow you to put multiple oh, so, things here. Okay, so it allows a, you to put, put in it. two commas, and it'll actually put in a blank line in between the two, which is sometimes really nice if you want okay. to break up the stuff. Um, but so it, basically, it, it gives you a lot of a lot of um, options as to actually how to how to display the data and no, you know, I guess put in two double quotes in between. So. In yeah, so so it would be numbers. like an empty. Yeah, maybe yeah. that would help, right? I thought it did it by default, but apparently not. Hold on. Uh, yes, that's okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So, in general, this allows you to take a peek onto variables and objects oh. very easily. Yeah, and then demonstrate the list bars as well, just in case people don't aren't aware of that. Right. If you are running a script, it doesn't matter. If, even if you are not using any type of IDE or whatever, if the script is running, you can always double click on their icon here and you can see the last uh, code that right. run, yeah. right? And you can also check the variables in their contents, which would give you information, basic information about, you know, it, it will not kind of like detail it. It's just going to tell you that there's an object there, but it's not going to detail it for you. And if you also can take a look at, well, that, that was the point, like looking at the well, variables. But show it, put it in as the a script. command. Okay, yeah, as right. a command. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But so, both, this is good too, because a right. lot of people aren't aware that, that stuff is or there. You can also say list bars, and that's a command that you have. And you can also do the other thing uh, um, of showing uh, other information that is on the script. Many of the commands that you have here, like the lines more recently executed and variables and everything, all of that is accessible via commands on the script. So don't worry, you do have, here you have list lines, list vars, list hotkeys, and all of those commands allow you to do this. It will actually open that part of this GUI, would perform the same action. So double clicking on the icon, or just going ahead and using the list hotkeys command, it gives you the same type of information. Yeah, so true. if you are debugging, if you're if you want to kind of like get into the the um, this type of easier way of knowing what is going on with your script, and you do not have an IDE available that at that moment, yeah, just add those lines on your script and you will be able to get the information that you need without having to put a message box or something because that stops the script, you know? Right. So <laughs> that, that, that's basically my, my, my biggest point with, with, with debugging is that I do not have to add any piece of code. I just loop over it, stop the script, and I could watch it real time and change information on it without me having to add a message box or uh, add a, a... Yeah, but you added a breakpoint. You know, but no, I, no, I still but, but understand. That, but that didn't modify my script at all. So right now, uh, I just check the information and I could save the file and give it to you and nothing will happen. Right. If you have like a lot of message boxes around your script, you have to remember to remove them later, right? Whenever sure. you're going to share this. But script. typically when you're debugging, you're doing one at a time, right? So right, of course. anyway, I'm not knocking it. I'm, I've no, seen no, you no, use no, a lot. Basically. It's awesome. I'm just saying you can debug with other approaches. Of course. Do okay. Of course. <laughs> now, now, here's the other part. The output debug command is the one that is silent. Instead of creating a message box that yep. you know stops the script, you can set some text in here and the script will continue working. Like, uh, let's just put here, let me remove this breakpoint. And what is gonna happen is that it's gonna send 
uh, silent data, this information is only being sent to certain types of applications that are listening to it. Right. Now, the IDEs and the ones that you mentioned, Site for Auto Hotkey, uh, AHK Studio, all major aid IDEs have a debug console that is listening to those type of messages. So even if you forget to remove the output debug, right. your script is not going to show that to anybody, just those apps, which is good. And it won't error out if they run it from Notepad. No, exactly. It's not, you're not going to have any, any errors, anything. So now, if your IDE does not have a debugger or you know, an, app, an application that captures those messages, you can always go and find the, the sysinternal suite yeah, brings we, brings with, with a win debug mother uh, uh debug view i think it is dbg view dbg yeah that sounds right i think it's dbg view or something like that ah there it is so this debug view app what it does is that it is just listening for debugging scripts whenever somebody sends a message notice that that message came in now, if you open, and this is the thing, it is listening to any app that is sending right. messages and it would right. just list them up in here. You would have to just filter out a little bit of information and you have some filtering and stuff like that. But in general, this is a debugging client that just listens in general. Yeah, which is and, very cool. Yeah. Right, so all of these tools allow you to kind of like debug your script quickly, just send your messages, or use the live debugger, it doesn't matter. There's many ways for you to do that. The only thing is that we wanted to just point out how to start with that. Yeah, well, and, and also just to reinforce what I, the first thing I would do if I was using this is go assign hotkeys that make sense to you for launching each of those things, right? Because right, yeah. you're gonna use it 8 million times. I mean, it's so, right. it's one of the most frequent things you do. So assign a hotkey that makes sense to you. I just, I just went ahead and, in the keyboard shortcut, just put ASK and I just start looking at, oh, look, debug. Okay, I just right. changed that to whatever I like. And notice that you do have some contexts that you can set. Like, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. this F9 hotkey only works if the language is ASK. That's you awesome. Right. So you, you can change the context of when it's going to happen. And look at that. If not in debug mode and the editor language is ASK too. So you have to be... Th that hotkey is only going to work on that context. So just take a look at it, switch them to whatever you want. If you know about a little bit of context in VS Code, just set the context for that script. You should be good to go. Awesome. Thanks, man.